before we actually had the Northy Street site, we looked around Red Hill, Ash Grove, various areas looking for a suitable site. One of the ones we found was at Free Street at Newmarket and it seemed um, to be good. It was a nice flat piece of land and it backed on to a nursing home or a retirement village more than a nursing home and we thought that would be excellent because older people often have to give up their gardens when they move into those places. Most of the old people were quite happy to have a city farm but one of them got, the nephew of one old lady came along to the meeting and he was quite obstreperous, he was sort of threatening legal action and uh, contacted the council who'd previously been supportive but uh, then uh, they withdrew their support. I went along and tried to, um, to I spoke to that community and just tried to say we wanted to work with them and whatever they were happy or not happy about we would work with them. They got very concerned about what was going to happen and that we were going to have pigs and cows and all sorts of things at the back of their property. We went back to the council and said we're pretty determined um, after they'd knocked back the other site and we want to set up a city farm in this catchment so um, we went and had a meeting with Bill Watts who was a administrator in the parks department and he pulled out a map and said, well, how about this side? Some people who looked as if they'd been gardening came in and they wanted to use some land on a local creek where houses had been washed away in the big 74 flood. It was council-owned land with a group of interested people. So we started, as it were, from scratch. John, I think, made the declaration that he would be there on such and such a date with a wheelbarrow and a pick and a shovel, and I thought, that suits me, and, and I turned up too, and that was the beginning. The things that we wanted to achieve were, were centred around organic gardening um, and, and behind that I suppose or supporting it was, the, was a notion of permaculture. Kids were very much a part of the reason we wanted to, to start the city farm. Um, yeah and just to demonstrate that it was possible to grow food in the city and a lot of people think that it's very difficult but we wanted to, to prove that you could grow food fairly easily and organically. At the end of, um, I think it would have been three or four months, we actually agreed on the objectives of, of Northy Street City Farm. We agreed to, that we would, we would provide the space and the skills and the knowledge for people to learn how to garden organically. We also decided that we should do it locally, so our objectives um, state that we will do it within the, the catchment area of our creek. We came down here and, and then started walking the site, understanding the landscape and then did a design process. This site was just grass. It was swampy and wet. No water, no power. The tap was about 100 metres away. So there was cinders in some places, concrete rubble in other places. The only shelter was the mango trees. Lots of old bottles and old bricks and clay and so and it had, with the mowing from the tractors, it had a hard pan layer. The soil was just horrendous, like you couldn't even stick your finger in it. When you went to put a fork or a shovel in, it just bounced off. It was very, very different to what you see today. One of the main issues during that time was not to overreach ourselves because we didn't want to create a maintenance problem with the limited uh, numbers of people that we had. So there was a lot of care about um, how much initiative to take in growing the place because if you grew something, you then had to maintain what you'd grown. And it was very much about never trying to bite off more than you can chew. Like, let's consolidate this first, get a grip of it, learn the skills of this first before we take the next step. There was a real need for labour. And of course, if you're a teacher of horticulture students, you have a great labour supply because you have classes of students that are keen and enthusiastic and have plenty of muscle. And of course, we came down and did no dig gardens, um, helped put up fences and screens and uh, built garden beds and did lots of planting and I think that helped. It was a great experience for the students but it also helped I guess to get a little bit of the back breaking work done in those early stages. We come down on Thursday mornings and then a few people said oh you know I work during the week and I need to come down on you know on the weekend so we started up the Sunday but we'd only ever have half a day because there was no loo here and everyone was busting to go to the loo and there was no bushes to go and pee behind <laughs> anyway so you had to go home. People persisting was really important, um, people turning up, um, having materials, having the assistance of council, Brian Switzer was really important in the help he was giving us bit by bit over the years, getting the water on, getting um, the sheds to put our own tools in, uh, getting the tools from Jenny, they were really important. And I guess the other one was people coming along really, it was 
having a group of people who are, who are coming together, talking, thinking about it, had some sort of vision in mind as to what we were trying to create. From the very start of this project, we were having conversations, door knocks, letter drops, uh, events to bring people from the local community engaged in this place. The community side is just as important as the sort of the growing plant side, and the, the growing plant side won't work unless you look after the community side of a place like this. We had a, a thing that we called the meetings under the mango tree, which was where we made our decisions. Um, and that went on for five or six years, and that's where most of the serious decision making actually did happen. Building a really good group dynamic and, and trust between all the members and setting up good decision making processes and inclusive processes. Unless you have people then you don't have a city farm, so for me it was all about encouraging relationships between the people that came along and looking after new people. Permaculture is an integrated design system. So it, it doesn't just operate on one level. It's not just the physical appearance of a place which, which determines that it's, a, that it's a permaculture design or a permaculture place. It's, um, it's all of the people structures and, um, and um, ways of operating, the, the, the things that, go, that are attached to that piece of land. The big 